Tested, welcome. It's the end of 2020 and that is a great thing. I am Gunther, I'm a video producer here at Tested and I've got a collection of some of my favorite things that I'd like to share with you. Uh, last year I didn't do a favorite things because, well, I didn't really get many things last year, but this year was different. Um, I've got, you know, all video things, of course, and some expensive, some cheaper, and all of which I think, you know, if you're into photography or video are really good additions to your kit. Uh, the first thing, which is something long overdue, is a proper filter kit. Um, this is a Haida M10. These are super nice. Um, admittedly, mostly for landscape photography, maybe product photography, because it adds quite a lot of bulk to the front of a camera. Um, but the construction on the Haida filter holders are super nice, just really solid. And not only is the construction really nice, they're very functional too. You can fit 100 by 100 filters in here or even longer. You can do uh, neutral density, you can do graduated neutral density, all sorts of stuff. This has a, um, a circular polarizer in there too. Really nice and when I'm out taking landscape photos, having this on the front of the camera just gives me a lot of confidence and ease to switch in between shots. Um, so I highly recommend this filter kit. Um, there's some other great options out there too, but um, this is the one I chose. Next edition is the X-Rite Color Checker. This is the Passport model. Uh, it's a little pricey, but you know, there's other options you could go with too. I like this because it's very compact, rigid, nice quality. It's great for bringing into the field. Um, having a color checker is something I never really thought of bringing with me. I usually just bring like a gray card or something like that. But you know, if you're working in weird lighting environments or with lower bit depth cameras, like an 8-bit camera like I was for the longest time, um, having a color checker really just gives you that extra confidence moving into post. Like I said, if you're working in weird lighting environments, have weird gamma profiles, or like I said, lower bit depth cameras, this is just really solid. Um, I, I throw it in my bag, it doesn't take up any room, and it never leaves my side at this point. Next item is a battery checker. This one is the DLY Full Battery Checker. Got it off of Amazon. Um, it's pretty basic, uh, powered by a battery itself, a, a AAA. For the longest time I was using rechargeable batteries, um, and I, I try to do that as much as possible too. Um, but they're expensive and they go missing and sometimes, you know, you just have to buy a pack of good old-fashioned double A's to get a project done. And at the end of that project, you have a bunch of loose batteries everywhere and sometimes you don't know which ones are fully charged and which ones aren't. Um, this gives you the confidence to just check the good ones and put them in your bag. Um, oftentimes too, I'll find like a three-quarter full charge one and I'll use it too. Um, I like it, you don't waste things and uh, you get the best out of all your batteries. Next item is the A7S III. This was a long time coming for me. I purchased the a7 III five years ago uh, and with the intention of quickly upgrading to the a7S III. And as many of you know, it took quite a long time for this thing to come out. But boy, was it worth the wait because they basically gave us everything we could have possibly wanted. Uh, 4K 10-bit 120. That's the uh, very common spec that everyone throws out there. It's great, I love it. I do a lot of uh, wildlife photography, a lot of product photography, and of course, uh, documentary style work here at Tested. And this just, it's so comfortable in the hand. It's so lightweight. You know, you could just run and gun with a simple setup like this with maybe like a 24 to 105 on there with a stabilized lens. And it's just solid. The 10 bit color profiles are so nice. Really good detail. Even though it is that small megapixel sensor, it has a lot of detail, um, easy to work with in post, great colors now too, Sony's done a lot of work to that. And like I said, it just feels good in the hand too. They've done a lot of usability upgrades since the last a7 III and the buttons just feel nicer, the grip is bigger, it feels really good in the hand and I have a lot of confidence moving into a shoot, especially now with a new menu system that they've created that's just super easy to use. So I couldn't recommend this camera highly enough. Um, keep an eye out in future tested content for things shot with this. Maybe I'll do a video on my workflow with this sort of system. Let me know if you're interested in the comments below. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend this bit of kit. Last item is the Mavic Air 2. As some of you may know, we did a video on this earlier in the year and I absolutely love this drone. Uh, it's the perfect size, has great highly detailed footage. Uh, you can shoot in a log profile and it comes out looking beautiful. I've used this on a lot of personal projects, some paid gigs, some not, uh, some content here at Tested too, and I couldn't be happier. It just sits in my backpack now and takes up hardly any room. Um, like I said, it's the perfect size and it does 4K video just right. 
Um, you know, it's not super high level professional, you know, there, there's, there's a reason to buy a more expensive drone, but for what it is, this is perfect and I highly recommend it. Well, there you have it. Those are my favorite things of 2020. I'm very excited to move on to the new year and thank you to the Tested community for supporting us through this year. It's been amazing to see the amount of support we've had through these weird, weird times, especially from the production aspect where everything's shot in an iPhone these days. Um, like I said, thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you in the new year.